Hey Dragon Slayers, today's video is about how there's more to thyroid function than simply measuring TSH, part two. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. Let's get started. So what does the research say on this topic? Research supporting this lie is very scarce. When the TSH test became available, doctors were excited about having a fast and easy thyroid test. They basically forgot how to use their critical judgment and physical examination skills where the signs and symptoms of thyroid disease are concerned. They started to blindly trust this one test. Authors of research papers often initially imply that the TSH is all that needs to be checked, but then they waffle later in the article by mentioning something like the TSH test's weakness should be kept in mind. Many doctors have stopped reading before they get to the second part. Therefore, they falsely think that the TSH test is the only test needed to diagnose thyroid disease. When any test is discovered and marketed as the new gold standard, it tends to dull the critical thinking of doctors. When all the advertising and the doctors with the longest white coats say the tests work, regular doctors began to blindly accept the advertising as unquestionable truth and stop thinking for themselves. This sort of error has often happened in medicine, so often that you would think doctors would be wary of blindly trusting a patient's health to new tests. No research that Dr. Barry is aware of has ever attempted to prove the TSH tests is the only test needed to check the state of your thyroid health. Yet doctors keep acting as if it's the only test that you need. The key takeaway message from all of this is that anytime a test or treatment is called the gold standard in medicine, it tends to make doctors mentally lazy. This label leads them to think everything worth knowing about a topic is already known, and there is no need for further thought or effort. The TSH test is one such gold standard. The assumption that one test is sufficient for diagnoses and management often makes doctors look foolish and causes patients to suffer. Doctors use the TSH test for everything from a physiological marker of thyroid function to a guide for initiating and monitoring thyroid medication dosage. If this is an adequate test for all of these uses, then most doctors have no idea how the normal range of a lab test is determined or what can falsely elevate or depress the measured level of a test. Before the TSH test became widely available, doctors listened to and examined their patients for symptoms and signs of thyroid disease. If a patient had severe fatigue, weight gain, and constipation, and was losing the outer one-third of their eyebrows, doctors diagnosed the patient with hypothyroidism without needing the, TA, the TSH test. Now, because a gold standard has been announced for diagnosing thyroid issues, most doctors have stopped looking for physical signs and symptoms of thyroid disease. Instead, they only check a patient's TSH level. Another serious problem with this test is that the TSH can be affected by a patient's smoking, sickness, stress level, or activity level, such as when the patient works out before having the lab work done. Most doctors have no idea that a patient's TSH level can be affected by so many things or that the level can change so substantially over the course of a single day. That's what I've got for you guys today. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really helps the channel out. And remember guys, that together, you and I will slay the dreaded diabetes dragon.